Hello everyone and welcome to this week's lab. So this week, uh, we're going to learn that how we can create our own tools in ArcGIS Pro. So let's get started. Uh, so we're going to build our uh, project. So this will be our lab 9. And we're going to save the everything in our uh, OneDrive folder. So I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, so the, the data that we're going to use uh, as a demo purposes are from our Lab 7. So if you don't have the data from your Lab 7, or if you deleted your Lab 7 projects, uh, please check the Lab 7 tutorial, uh, and also try to re-download the data from ArcGIS Online or Living Atlas. Uh, however, since I do still have the data, so I go to my uh, OneDrive folder, and so see this is my lab 9 that is the current project and i go to my lab 7 and i open the database where so i'm going to use a county population uh, mass routing data and a state population so i will use those three data set and i'm going to export the data into my uh, current geo database all right so those uh, those three uh, data will be uh, exported and saved into my, copied actually, copied to my uh, Lab 9 Geo database. So let's go ahead and run it. And now if I go back to my uh, project, uh, and now if I open the database, so now you can see we have data that is ready. So let's bring the county population uh, and also mass routine data. All right. Uh, so in ArcGIS Pro, so we can define our own tools, and the tools will be saved in this toolbox. Okay, so right now it is empty. Uh, so if we go to Analysis, uh, we can say we are able to uh, create uh, model, uh, model tools by using the Model Builder, so which is the easiest way to create our own tools. Uh, you can also create Python tools, um, uh, or create a Python notebook. So um, I think Python Notebook is more flexible and also more powerful because you can call the other Python libraries. However, this requires that you know Python very well. So in our case, let's uh, bring the model builder. So open the model builder. So now you can see we have a tool that's called model uh, in our toolbox. Uh, in the model builder, so we have several uh, functions. So for example, we can bring all the existing tools into our uh, project into this builder to be part of our new tool. So we can combine multiple tools together and then we can run those analysis and also we can save that as a new tool. So that will save us a lot of time. We also have other uh, functions or utilities. So for example, we can iterate a data in the, in the database or in the folder uh, or we can use a for loop or while loop. Uh, we can also calculate values uh, or pass through the path. Um, we can also bring the logic. So for example, we can check whether or not a data exists or whether or not um, a feature class exists. Okay, so those are some additional uh, utilities in the model builder. All right, so now let's talk about the tool that we're going to build. So we're going to build a tool that to, let's say, count um, for each single uh, mass routine event, what other population within 50 kilometers? Okay, so we have done that in the lab seven. So uh, you, you may want to check lab seven uh, to recall your memory. So what we did, so what we did was that we have three solutions to answer that same question. So we can use buffer analysis, intersect, summarize, and also join. So those four tools together to answer that question. Or we can use uh, the summarize nearby function to answer that question. So however, summarize nearby is not free. So it may cost your credits. Um, but if we use buffer, intersect, etc., so it will be four steps. So today, we're going to combine those four steps together as a single tool. So that will save us a lot of time. Uh, so let's do that. So let's first, let's go to this tool and search buffer. And we bring this buffer tool to our model builder. So now we have this buffer, which requires input. 
and they also give you an output. Uh, so let's bring our math routine as the demo data. And let's say we are going to create a buffer for the math routine. So we connect the math routine to the buffer tool. We set that as an input feature. And then we double click. And because the distance is a required uh, variable or required parameters, let's say we want 50 and, uh, kilometers. Uh, you can also define your output, so you can choose that as a mass routine buffer, which I think is great. And now you can see I want to validate, and you can run this tool like this. So you can see now it is uh, finished. So if I refresh my uh, geodatabase, you can see the buffer has been created. Uh, you can bring that onto your map uh, if you like, but that's just a buffer that's similar buffer that we created in our previous uh, lab. Uh, so if you let's save this tool. So if you bring the opener tool from the toolbox, now if you double click, you can see we don't have any parameters. So which means that if you click wrong, you will create the exactly the same buffer, uh, 50 kilometers around this mass routine data set. So we want that tool to be work with other data set. So what we can do is that we can set the mass routine as a parameter. So that will be our input uh, data set. Uh, we can also let user to define where you want to put the output. So that will be our output. And, and now for the buffer analysis, let's create a variable from the distance. Uh, so we use distance. And now let's let user to define the distance as well. So let's define that as a parameter as well. Uh, so let's auto layout, save this tool. And now let's go back to our toolbox and we re reopen this tool. So now we have the parameters. So now you can bring uh, the different tools into your analysis. You can see where you want to save your output. You can also define the uh, the distance for the buffers. Okay, so that's nice. All right, uh, so let's continue. So let's rename this one as uh, input feature. And for this one, uh, let's rename that as output feature. So next, we want to use this buffer to intersect with the county population. So let's drag county population. And let's just call this one the summary feature. And so let's bring the intersect tool. So intersect. So for this intersect, uh, the both the buffer and also summarize feature will be the input data. So let's auto layout. Uh, so now we have the intersect where we have the output feature and our summary feature. Um, and we have the result of this intersect, uh, which will be the result of the intersect uh, between the buffer and also the county population. Uh, next, we need to summarize. So let's go ahead and find out summary statistics. And uh, the output of the intersect will be the input feature of this summary statistics. Um, and here, let's say we want summary the total population uh, for each buffer, right? We want to, so that's FID of each single buffer. And we click OK. And let's see, we also want user to choose the statistics. Um, let's also create a variable from the case ID. So we will uh, we want to see the case field. We will use this variable later. Okay. All right. So that is a summary statistics. And Finally, we need to join the, the summarized table back to our buffer. So uh, let's bring the join, join field. And for this join field, let's open the join field. 
Uh, so for the input table, uh, we want the output feature of this buffer. So let's actually do this. So oh, uh, all right. So this will be the input feature. Sorry. So the join table. This should be the join table, and this buffer should be the input table. Okay. So here we go. Um, now we need to define the, the common field. So this will be the object ID of the buffer and equals to the FID of the buffer. So now let's click OK. And uh, let's auto layout. Uh, let's save this analysis. OK, so let's go through this tool one more time. So we're going to create a buffer for the mass routing data set. And then we use this buffer to intersect with our po uh, county population, uh, which is uh, we call it uh, the feature summary feature. And then in this output, we all have the buffer ID. We will also have the population from different counties. So then we uh, we want to do a summary statistics where we want to count the total population for each buffer ID. And then we are drawing the result back to the buffer based on object ID equals the buffer ID, so which is essentially the, the buffer ID equals buffer ID. All right, uh, let's also decide what will be the... Um, so we also want user to define the summary feature. And uh, let's also create two variables, which is input field, which now is the object ID. Uh, we just want to double check that. Uh, we also need to create a variable that from the join table field. Uh, so right now, it will be the FID of the mass routing buffer, which is this one. All right. So let's save our tools and let's reopen our model. Okay. And let's see. Let's run it this one more time. Let's see. That's input feature, mass routing. Uh, and the output will be the mass routing buffer. Uh, we have this warning because we already have the data set that I called mass routing. So we're going to overwrite that data set. Uh, you can choose the distance. Uh, you can choose uh, total population. And you can bring the, the summary feature. So you can define the summary feature. Um, let's run this tool now one more time. OK, so now. Uh, can look at the details. So we have created buffer. Uh, right now, I believe now we are doing the intersect. So this will take uh, a few minutes. So let me pause the video here. OK, uh, so, so now this analysis is complete. So we have finished all the three, all the four steps um, by just a single click. So now if we go to the catalog, uh, let's refresh our data set. So we have a buffer, and the buffer is also added into our map. So now we have those uh, buffers. So let's open the attribute table. Okay, so now you can see, great. So now we have the total population within the 50 kilometers of each buffer. So uh, right now we have completed our tool, but we still have a few uh, issues, so the tiny issues. So let's delete uh, this buffer. So first, so the output feature, so the default name is a mass routing buffer. However, so if user change or give it a different output name, then when we do uh, statistics, it will no longer be the FID of the mass routing buffer, right? So for example, they just call it buffer. And then this will be our error. And also, when we do a, a table drawing, so object ID, this will be fine because that is, uh, this will always be the drawing, uh, input drawing field, which is from the buffer. However, for this drawing table field, again, if user gave it a different output name, this will no longer be the right output name. So, uh, we want the user to define the output name, but we also want to make sure to avoid those errors. 
So this is where we can use the parser pass tool. So let's bring the parser pass tool. And let's connect the output feature to the pass pass tools. Uh, let's re. OK, so re auto layout. So now we have the name. So if you click the name, the name will be the values of whatever user defined in this output. OK, so that's the name, the value of this name variable. And now we are going to pass this name to the case field. OK, so we are called whatever you define the name. We are called FID percentage name. OK, so this is syntax in ArcGIS Pro so that by using percentage and also name variables, we will bring the value of the name, which right now is match rating buffer, to this case field. So now the input will be the FID and score mass shooting buffer. Okay, so that will resolve our problem. Great. Uh, so let's do that one for the drawing table as well. So again, it will be uh, FID percentage name. Okay. And now let's save it. Okay. Uh, so now I think um, uh, this uh, is ready. However, sorry, it's not actually ready. So, however, uh, uh, the ArcGIS Pro will do the parser and also intersect. So, they will pick which one they want to run first. So, if they run the parser first and then they do the intersect and summarize and also join, then there will be no issue because it, they, if they do the parser, we will have the name. What if ArcGIS Pro do the intersect first and then summary? And then if they run the intersect first, we don't have the value for the name variable yet. OK, so if that's the case, we will have an error. OK, so we have to tell ArcGIS Pro that we need to run the parser first. OK, so to do that, let's say we want to put a name, connect to the, uh, let's connect to the summary statistics. We want that to be a precondition of the summary statistics. OK, and let's also do that for the drawing. So that would be a precondition for the drawing as well. OK, so now the logic is that so ArcGIS Pro will run the parser first to have the value of the name variable. And then they will do the intersect summary statistics so that when they do a summary statistics, they will have the value for the name. So they will have the value for the case field, and they will have the value for the drawing table field. And then that, by doing that, we will not have errors. All right, uh, so now let's test our uh, data. So let's say we open our uh, model tool. And let's say we want to choose the input feature, still as a math routine. Uh, let's give it a different name. For example, uh, our result, let's call it uh, Buffer test. OK, uh, so now we, you can see we gave it a different name. And we are still be using the, uh, the county population. Let's say we are going to use uh, the state population. OK, uh, so, so here you can see we are still using the total population as a summary statistics. And uh, the distance, so let's give it uh, 5,000. All right, and so now let's run this analysis. Again, I'm going to pause my video here because the uh, intersect will take uh, a pretty much longer time. OK, uh, it takes uh, almost nine minutes to complete. Um, I'm not sure uh, what is the reason that why it takes so long. Uh, either because I think I saved everything in OneDrive, and OneDrive was pretty busy all because I choose a very larger uh, buffer. So uh, maybe next time I should not choose that buffer. So uh, let's go to the map. Uh, so you can see, oh yeah, probably that's buffer that is too huge. So we have the buffer. You can see um, here we have the result. So we do have the result. Those are population that copied from the state and not uh, from the, uh, the county. So. We are able to change the, the summary features. Uh, we are able to choose a larger buffer size, just be cautious that it may take longer time. Um, 
Um, so I think that's pretty much about our uh, tool. Uh, but we, we still have a few things that we can do with our tools. So for example, we want to optimize our tool. Uh, we want to put it running faster. Uh, and also we want to provide some uh, helpful information. We also want to change the model, the tool name to be a, a more meaningful name. So let's first, let's go to our uh, tool editor. Uh, so I'm going to bring that one here. Uh, so for example, so I used the intersect, which is default uh, uh, intersect analysis. And actually, if we use uh, intersect pairwise, okay. So this one actually will probably will be faster than the intersect because this is uh, optimized. So let's replace our tool. So uh, we bring this one, connect with our intersect, with our buffer, and we change that into our input table. Okay, so. So that's number one. So we can change the tools in our toolbox. Sometimes, for example, you, if you want to switch your analysis or if you want to use a tool that is faster. And secondly, so let's delete the default input. So for, the, for example, uh, let's delete the, the input feature, the default one. Let's delete the 50 kilometers. Um, let's also delete the population county population data as a default data set. Um, and also for this statistic field, so let's remove the population so that user can choose a different uh, input values. All right, uh, so let's auto layout and validate. Okay, so that is uh, pretty much about the designing part of our tool. Um, next, let's give it a new name. So the label, so let's call it summary nearby free okay so this will be the free uh free version of a summary nearby and that's called lab lab nine uh you can also give it a password so for example if you want to protect your password you don't want other people to use without knowing password so you can set password um so now we have a different uh, tool name uh let's go to the metadata Okay, and uh, let's say we want to define some metadata. So let's give a tag. Um, and also you can also give it a brief summary. So how you want to use this tool. So this is the free version of the summarize nearby. Okay, and you can Give the help information what will be the input features. So let's say it can be points, lines, all polygons. Okay, and also it can provide help for, uh, help information for the other uh, fields. All right, uh, so let's save this one. And now let's look at how the data look like. So. Okay, so now uh, oh, we need also remove the, uh, the default output value. So let's uh, go back to the toolbox and for the output. So let's remove the default output values and let's save it one more time. Okay, so now this tool looks like much better, right? So uh, we have the name. We also have the helpful information uh, for those fields, which you can add later. Um, and we also removed all the default values so the user can bring um, their own data and also to, uh, to run a summarize nearby that for free.